So we are going to have a look at some of the strongest characters in Invincible and rank them accordingly. Shrinking Ray was admitted into the new Guardians of the Glode, where he has served with distinction. Ray is sensitive to the fact that his powers are not as spectacular as those his teammates possess, and deeply resents any implication that his shrinking abilities are not useful. But shrinking Ray's insecurities just inspires him to greater acts of heroism. Through hard work and unswerving devotion to the Guardians, he wanted to be considered a giant among heroes. Like his name suggests, he had the ability to shrink to small sizes, and his power allowed him to be able to escape traps quite easily. But his powers caused his death when he was swallowed whole by Komodo Dragon from Lizard League. The original Darkwing was a hero with no powers. He was a member of the Guardians of the Globe and had a sidekick Nightboy. When Darkwing was killed by Omni-Man, Nightboy became the new Darkwing. He wasn't as good as his predecessor in any sense. He wasn't on his level in fighting ability or in moral fiber. Instead of protecting Midnight City, he became its dictator. The new Darkwing was only an above average hand-to-hand -hand combatant, had little gadgets, and relied on his Shadowverse powers that allowed him to walk into shadows, teleport, and trap enemies inside it. Machine Head is a cyborg of unknown origin that controlled a protection racket in the city. He was also involved in drug traffic, disguised as garbage disposal, and building insurance fraud, ordering the destruction of buildings, but staged them to look like accidents so he could collect the insurance money. Machine Head comes across as fastidious, materialistic, short-tempered, and callous. His only concern is amassing wealth and shows no concern as to how many people get hurt or die because of demands. As the name would suggest, his head and neck are entirely mechanical, made out of some gray-colored metal alloy. His faceplate is colored black with yellow lines surrounding his mouth and eyes, as well as one line crossed horizontally over his forehead, similar to a Luchador's mask. Due to his quantum probabilities upgrade, Machine Head is able to prepare plans for any possible situation. He demonstrated this quality by engaging in advanced supervillains, guessing Titan would turn on him. This can be seen as the ability to see or predict what is going to happen in near future. Knockout is an attractive Caucasian woman. She has blue eyes and short blonde hair. She normally wears a small stud nose ring through her right nostril. Knockout's physique is reminiscent of a female boxer. She isn't heavily muscled, but she has a tiny percentage of body fat. Knockout employs a unique pair of boxing gloves in combat. Through some unknown method, be it technological or magical, the gloves grant their wearer the ability to strike physical objects with superhuman force in addition to providing a measure of invulnerability. Kursk is a slim white male of average height and weight. His true features have yet to be revealed, even though he has been imprisoned several times. In every one of his appearances to date, Kursk has been seen wearing a yellow spandex bodysuit, and it literally covers him head to foot. Kursk is a professional mercenary and bodyguard who has displayed very little concern for the human lives that surround him. At this point, he is entirely motivated by two things, money and self-preservation. Kursk possesses the ability to generate large amounts of electrostatic energy. He generally emits this energy in focused bolts of lightning-like electrical arcs from his hands, and at their maximum intensity, Kursk's bolts can easily kill a man. While Kursk's powers are in use, the air that immediately surrounds his body is filled with electrostatic energy, and anyone who dares touch his form during these periods are in danger of being electrocuted. Little is known of the past of the super criminal known as Elephant, the process by which he became super strong and how his synthetic hide became bonded to his flesh is still a mystery. Due either to a natural criminal inclination or an inability to live normally in society, Elephant turned to a life of crime. The chemical structures of the elephant's physiological makeup have been altered by unknown means granting him enhanced physical strength and denser body mass, a higher degree of resistance to physical injury, increased stamina, and accelerated recuperative powers. It has been speculated that the elephant also possesses a photographic or eidetic memory, also referred to as total recall, which is the ability to recall images, sounds, or objects in memory with great accuracy and in seemingly unlimited volume. Unfortunately, the elephant possesses a low to below average intellect and has yet to apply his augmented memory abilities in a manner that could aid him in his criminal endeavors. Furnace possesses the normal human strength one would expect to find in a man of his age, height, and build who engages in regular exercise. Furnace's body is composed of a substance resembling magma. It is constantly radiating both heat and light. On average, the surface temperature of his body is 400 degrees C but with concentration he can increase this temperature to much higher levels. Furnace looks like a humanoid column of magma, and his form is clearly fluid in nature, and glows with an internal light all of its own. 
Furnace wears an advanced suit of armor while executing his criminal endeavors. It is quite durable and has an extremely high melting point. The twin cannons in the armor's arms focus Furnace's energy into precise blasts of pure flame. The armor can also concentrate and focus Furnace's energy through exhaust ports in its legs. The expelled energy acts like a jet stream and generates enough thrust to allow the armor to achieve self-sustained flight. Cecil is the head of the Global Defense Agency and is in charge of the Guardians of the Globe, a man who would protect the world regardless of the cost. Though Cecil has no real superhuman powers, his body no longer requires rest in the manner that normal humans do, and he literally no longer needs to sleep. Cecil has full access to all of the advanced technology that has been made available to the Guardians of the Globe. As a former field agent for the Global Defense Agency, Cecil has received extensive training in hand-to-hand -hand combat, firearms, and all manner of stealth and espionage techniques. He is also a capable leader, and over the years has risen in stature. Now he personally commands the entirety of the Global Defense Agency itself. Magmaniac was your basic not-too-bright criminal muscle. Though he was not particularly malicious, his powers did not let themselves commit victimless crimes, and as a result, he has been in prison for murder. Magmaniac could instantly transform his body into a malleable, molten magma-like substance. In this transformed state, Magmaniac's body took on the characteristics of molten lava. It could generate heat in a range of 700 to 1,200 degrees Celsius. He retained full control of his body while in this state, and through experience, Magmaniac gained the ability to shape this viscous form into any continuous shape he could imagine. Moreover, he could vomit forth streams of a fiery lava-like material from his mouth at high speeds. Tether Tyrant is not an intelligent or ambitious man. He is a simple creature of habit, and he desires nothing more than to have enough money to live comfortably, but doesn't want to work for it. However, make no mistake, as the Tyrant may not be a psychopath, but he is sociopathic enough to kill to get what he wants. He has a harness that resembles a reversed backpack to hold his symbiote directly in front of his chest. The majority of the symbiote has yet to be seen, but its many tentacled arms have been observed many times. He is not super strong, but when he allowed the symbiote to form a permanent bond with him, his and his symbiote powers were boosted, and he was able to fight the new guardians of the globe on his own for some time. Donald Ferguson is Cecil Stedman's assistant. Guardians of the Globe's contact, and an agent of the Global Defense Agency. Despite being brutally murdered at the hands of Omni-Man, he returned back with the help of Cecil, and now is much more powerful than before. Now Donald's body is 98% mechanical. Donald can apparently turn his arms into various objects, including various types of firearms. Now that he's cybernetic, his chances of fighting and killing strong opponents are higher, and even if his body gets destroyed, he can easily recover without any problem. Titan's story is a warped reflection of the American dream. From humble beginnings, Titan clawed his way up the criminal hierarchy until he became the leader of a powerful criminal cartel. Titan is capable of generating a stone-like outer shell, closely resembling granite which encases his entire body from head to toe by force of will. While in his stone-like state, he retains his normal human reflexes, speed, and mobility while gaining all the physical properties of stone such as strength and hardness. This provides him superhuman resistance to impact damage, temperature, and pressure extremes. He is capable of withstanding the impact of small firearms at a distance of at least 10 feet with minimal damage to his outer husk. The thickness of his stone outer skin ranges from half an inch at its thinnest to one inch at its thickest. His initial transformation leaves Titan enclosed in a solid sheath of stone with no visible points of articulation or seams. Articulation is achieved after he moves within his stone husk, cracking the shell at joints and points of flexion like knee or elbow. However, Titan does not possess the ability to repair his outer husk if it is damaged, cracked, or chipped, and must shed the shell entirely in order to generate a new, pristine one to replace it. Rexplode was one of the first heroes Invincible met along with the rest of the teen team. As a child, Rex was made into a soldier. He was trained in gymnastics and fighting and was put through experiments to alter his body, including giving him increased strength and the ability to charge inorganic materials. Due to a special device implanted in Rex's forearms, Rex has the power to accelerate molecules to an unstable level with potential energy, causing them to explode with kinetic energy. The power of the explosion varies depending on the size and chemical composition of the object, though distinctions do pop up. He was able to ignite his skeleton, turning himself into a suicide bomb with enough force to kill an evil version of Invincible, one who had previously survived a nuclear explosion with no harm. 
Duplicate possesses extensive martial arts fighting systems, including ground grappling, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Taekwondo, American boxing, Muay Thai, and kickboxing. As a result of the supernatural curse placed upon her family, Duplicate possesses the ability to create identical physical duplicates of her at will. It is not known precisely how her powers work. Although the duplicate bodies seem to split off from within her, she does not undergo a mitosis process like that of cells. Each duplicate possesses the same mass as the original, and although she can create multiple selves consecutively, she cannot bring into being more than one duplicate at a time. It is not yet known, What's the exact number of duplicates of herself she can create consecutively before taxing the ability? She has produced as many as a hundred at one time. Each of the duplicates is capable of independent thought, feeling, and action, although they are telepathically linked from formation to absorption. If one is injured or killed, the others would be affected, although the experience would be traumatic for all existing counterparts. Duplicate's duplicates remain in existence for as long as she wills them to. When she wills them out of existence, they are seemingly absorbed back into her body. It is not known if the death of the original body would automatically kill all the other duplicates. The Lizard League has been around for many years and has run into multiple superhero teams during that time. It is unknown how the Lizard League was originally formed or even when that happened precisely. While commonly referred to as a joke on social media and across the superhero community, they are most certainly not to be underestimated and that has been proved time and time again. Some of their members like King Lizard, Komodo Dragon, Salamander and Iguana have led to the death of many humans and also some superhero. Mastermind is a young criminal who is fairly new to the practice of supervillainy. By unknown means, Mastermind is capable of creating a field of psionic energy that allows him to project mental commands into the minds of one or more people while simultaneously compelling the victim to carry out those commands against their will. Although completely aware of what they are doing and able to speak freely while under his control, Mastermind's victims are incapable of controlling their actions or stopping themselves from doing what he has instructed them to do. With his powers, he was even able to control the bodies of hundreds of civilians and the guardians of the globe, which proves he is not an ordinary villain. Giant was actually an eight-year-old boy who fell through a mystical portal along with his grandmother. The two found themselves in an alternate dimension. There, a cruel wizard enchanted the youth to use him as a weapon against his enemies. Unfortunately for the wizard, he had underestimated the fire and rebellious nature of human teens. So after being turned into a monster, the peerless giant rampaged without fear. He eventually claimed the dimension as his own. He proclaimed himself king of the land and ruled it with a cruel and angry fist. Eventually, the giant's enemies banded together. Instead of fighting the cruel monarch, they simply banished him back to Earth. On Earth, he fought invincible and was beaten easily by him on multiple occasions. Kid Thor's enchanted hammer lets him combat foes that are bigger than him because of its size and can only be wielded by him. The hammer revealed that it could also resurrect Kid Thor if he ever died. In Norse times, a blacksmith from Scandinavian was visited by the thunder god Thor after his hammer Mjolnir was misplaced and asked if the blacksmith could build him a new one until Mjolnir was found. The hammer impressed Thor so much that he enchanted the new hammer and returned to the blacksmith so that only he and his future relatives could use it. The hammer was passed on from generation to generation until it found its way to Kid Thor, which he uses to fight crime with his team. Monster Girl possesses the supernatural ability to transform herself from a human female to a substantially larger, stronger, and more resilient humanoid-like male form. This change adds over 2,700 pounds of bone mass and tissue to her body by utilizing smart atoms to alter the normal movement of the quarks and gluons of her body's atoms, increasing or decreasing their mass as required. Her body is immune to most forms of conventional injury, including extremes in temperature and pressure, open flame, severe cold, radiation, and concussive forces. At first, Monster Girl had no control over her transformations, which would occur at random. Later, she learned to initiate the change into monster form through a conscious act of will. And now the metamorphosis between one aspect and another generally occurs in a matter of seconds. The adverse side effect of the curse is that her human form's physiological makeup is altered every time she changes into monster form. When Monster Girl changes, her DNA recreates the altered body form based on her current age. An error in her DNA coding means that her human age is underestimated and her monster age is overestimated. The more she assumes her monster persona, 
the younger her human form becomes upon reverting back again. Conversely, the younger her human self becomes, her monster form grows in both strength and stature. But her brain is not affected when the rest of her body changes, so it continues to develop as a normal human of her calendar age. Originally, both forms were roughly equal in size, but continued use of her powers has resulted in Monster Girl's human form regressing in physical age and appearance to that of a preteen, when in reality she has the life experience, demeanor, and mental processes of a 29-year-old woman. While her monster persona has consequently increased in strength and size, the Mauler twins are actually one person seeking to rule the world. The original Mauler, possibly a being of alien origins, was a genius in the fields of biology, especially genetics, mnemonics and cloning, and engineering. He was able to facilitate a machine that could create perfect tube-grown clones of another being. At some point in time, Mahler used the machine to clone himself, however, due to his own genius, the resulting clone had all of Mahler's memories. This sparked an endless debate on who of the two is the original Mahler. However, it also gave birth to an unlikely and effective partnership. Bulletproof has the superhuman ability to absorb kinetic energy, storing it within his body to be used to fuel his superhuman powers. When Bulletproof has a full charge, he can fly at high speeds and is nearly impervious to physical harm. His natural energy absorbing powers protect him from injury from objects invested with kinetic energy like bullets, shrapnel, physical blows. There are limitations to Bulletproof's powers. His resistance to injury does not extend to forces that do not have a great deal of kinetic energy, so he is vulnerable to strangling and crushing attacks. Bulletproof cannot indefinitely sustain a charge of kinetic energy, and maximum exertion of his powers will quickly drain him of potential energy. To address these limitations, the tailor has equipped Bulletproof with a suit of body armor that protects him from non-kinetic attacks as well as harnessing surplus energy. The distinctive discs on Bulletproof's suit are fuel cells that store superhuman energy, greatly increasing his stamina, and he may be able to use the discs as energy grenades as a last resort weapon. Mr. Liu is an elderly Asian cyborg and high-ranking member of the criminal organization called The Order. He can project his soul out of his body, taking the form of a giant oriental dragon. In his dragon form, he can fight multiple heroes and is able to cause a lot of destruction. Doc Seismic is shown to be an exceedingly demented individual. It is theorized that brain damage from his earthquake wristbands are the reason behind his insanity. Doc Seismic has a doctorate in seismology, an undergrad in sociology, women's studies, and a minor in African dance. Doc Seismic created two advanced gauntlets affixed to his wrist that when joined together create a wave of energy capable of agitating the molecular stability of inorganic material, resulting in a shearing-like effect that breaks down matter, causing it to break apart and fracture. When directed against large objects like buildings or upon the earth itself, the energy disruption can produce effects similar to those of an earthquake or avalanche. Doc Seismic was later taken by the female villain Volcanica and forced into a transformation from a mortal man into a being like her with the power to control fire and magma. This transformation caused him to become much more powerful and he can now control various giant creatures and monster who live under earth's surface. Shapesmith is portrayed as childish, immature, and a little reckless, similar to Rex Splode. Like all Martians, Shapesmith is a metamorph. He is capable of psionically shifting atoms and molecules of his body and whatever clothing he is wearing to change his and its appearances. As a result, he can cause himself to look and sound like an exact duplicate of any human, humanoid, semi-humanoid, or non-humanoid being of either sex, wearing virtually any kind of clothing. He can gain the natural physical attributes, including the strength, speed, reflexes, and senses of the beings or creatures whose forms he assumes. However, Shapesmith cannot gain the extrasensory or superhuman abilities of the imitated form. He is able to combine the DNA of various previously imitated organisms to form composite creatures. He can also add and subtract an unknown amount of physical mass to his body when assuming shapes larger or smaller than his own natural Martian form. It is theorized he's able to draw the extra mass from a store of the ambient quantum material around him and return it back again after he reverts back to his natural form. Brit is a bit of a caricature. He is honest to the point of bluntness and can be quite brutish. He displays a genuine lack of caring for his foes and will not hesitate to eviscerate them if it's the quickest way to win. Some terms that would describe Brit both in and out of combat would be overkill, property damage, walking hurricane. 
Britt is an astoundingly muscular white male who appears to be in his late mid to late 60s. His stark white hair is cropped close to his skull in an almost military style buzz cut. He normally can be found wearing a simply pair of khakis and a deep green turtleneck top. His superpower is that Brit is invulnerable to physical harm. In addition, his body seems to age at one third the rate of a normal human male. Other than this, he doesn't have any special ability. Angstrom Levy possesses the unique ability to move between dimensions, however, only within fixed space, so if steps from one dimension and into another, and the second dimension has a crater, he could be falling into said crater. It is for this reason that he performed his experiment to enhance his knowledge of the known dimensions. After the experiment failed where his different dimensional selves were killed when the machine he used was destroyed, he did gain the knowledge of multiple dimensions as he had hoped. However, as a result of his experiment conducted with the aid of the Mahler twins, he has increased his brain mass by over 80%, granting him vast intellectual prowess. With this, he has gained the memories of his dimensional duplicates from over 1,000 dimensions, and this union of parallel selves has given him intimate knowledge of those dimensions. Samson is a member of the Guardians of the Globe. For a time, Samson lost his powers and was let go from the team. Desperate to be a superhero again, he went to Art the Tailor to obtain a power suit. When the suit was stolen and the original Guardians were killed, he was initially the prime suspect. However, it was established that he had not left his home for weeks. The Guardian's funeral was disrupted by Samson's butler Sanford, who had stolen the suit to kill the Guardians as revenge for his employer. Samson was eventually recruited into the new Guardians of the Globe, wearing the power suit. During a battle between Invincible, Titan, the Guardians, and Machine Head Syndicate, Samson was seriously injured by Battle Beast, and he was in coma for several weeks. Later, when the Guardians were fighting against Omnipotus, Samson was somehow revived, and his powers returned to him greatly augmented, allowing him to turn the tide in the hero's favor. He managed to push back Omnipotus on his own and trapped him in his dimension. Universa arrived on Earth in order to steal energy from the planet to save hers. She headed to a power plant to siphon nuclear energy, but was stopped by Invincible and Adam Eve. She funnels enough energy into Mark, knocking him out. Mark grabs her staff, but gets shocked by it. She walks up to Mark until Eve punches her, making Universa unconscious. She is taken into custody and taken to Stronghold Prison. Universa has been shown to have flight and super strength, but her deadliest aspect has to be her weapon, the Staff of Leadership, which strengthens her and emits powerful energy beams, which are capable of leveling cities. Universa is capable of consuming nuclear energy and storing it in her staff. But without her staff, she's just an average female alien, who is physically even weaker than Adam Eve in her base form. Dinosaurus is an environmental activist and terrorist of unprecedented measure. He will go to any means to preserve the planet and its people even if it means he needs to kill millions of them at a time in order to preserve billions. This means that given a choice, he will take any necessary measures to preserve human life. Dinosaurus has considerable strength and durability, shown to be capable of going one-on-one -on -one with Invincible. He's even managed to critically injure the cosmically empowered villain, Omnipotus. Despite his savage nature, Dinosaurus has also demonstrated considerable intellect in his plans to change the world, although he typically executes them in very reckless and destructive ways. Oliver's heritage has given him access to the various abilities of both races as a thraxon viltrumite hybrid. Oliver's purple skin was the result of Thraxon's lower genetic compatibility with viltrumites than with humans. Because of this, Oliver's growth rate to become stronger is lesser than Mark's, as his human half is more compatible with viltrumites. Despite the comparatively lower genetic compatibility, Oliver's development is predominantly influenced by his viltrumite genes, hence why he has a more humanoid appearance than an insectoid, and why his purple skin turned light and creamy in color as he got older. Having inherited his father's dominating genes, if Oliver were to mate with an alien being with a different physiology than his own, they would likely inherit his traits more than the mother's species. Due to his Viltrumite heritage, Oliver is granted strength beyond human levels, whose upper limits are unknown. He was able to easily kill the Mahler twins. He has the potential to become stronger, but not as much potential as Mark due to his mother's Thraxon heritage not being completely compatible with the Viltrumite's DNA. Because of his Thraxon heritage, Oliver is able to gather and assimilate any kind of knowledge and understand it fully and instantaneously. He automatically understands the mechanics behind any issue or concept they face and knows what must be done to solve any problem. 
He has perfect recall and the ability to cross-correlate information instantly. He is capable of learning, analyzing, memorizing, understanding, and mastering limitless amounts of information, knowledge, and skills, and immediately utilizing them without effort. His intellect enables him to learn and master anything he comes across. But despite everything, he will remain weaker than a pure-blooded Viltrumite, who is well-trained and battle-experienced. The immortal gained the power of everlasting life at some point in the distant past through yet unknown means. His exact age is uncertain, but is believed to be well over 3,000 years old. He does not age, is not susceptible to disease, has exceptional recuperative powers, almost inexhaustible endurance, limitless stamina, and is invulnerable to conventional forms of harm. His flesh, while feeling much like human flesh, is capable of withstanding temperature and pressure extremes, as well as concussive forces up to those of an anti-tank missile. Should the immortal somehow be injured, he could regenerate any damaged or missing tissue. He can regrow organs and limbs in days. His head has been removed from his torso, and on another occasion his upper and lower torso have been torn in half. On both occasions, the immortal has fully recovered within days of the incidents. The immortal could only die through an injury that disperses a significant portion of his body's molecules. But even after his death, if someone finds and joins back his body parts, he will still come back to life. The immortal is able to mentally manipulate graviton particles around himself to achieve the enviable gift of unaided flight. His top flight speed is currently unknown, but it is sufficient for him to reach escape velocity, which is 25,000 miles per hour within seconds. The immortal retains the knowledge he has accumulated throughout his millennia-long lifespan, and accordingly is a formidable tactician and strategist with a hundred lifetimes of experience to draw upon. The Flaxons are a warlike race of humanoids from another dimension who have attempted to conquer Earth on multiple occasions. Flaxons originate from the planet Flaxon, which is located in a dimension where time moves faster than it does in our dimension. Individually, Flaxons are not strong at all and are probably at the level of an average human, but their main power lies in their numbers and their superior technology. They develop technology at a very fast rate compared to humans, because a week in human dimension is equal to multiple decades in the Flaxan dimension. But in comparison to Viltrumites, they are nothing, as Omni-Man alone was able to nearly destroy their entire civilization to the brink of extinction. Vidor is one of the Viltrumites who participated in the Great Purge. Vidor is a blonde male with a traditional Viltrumite mustache who wears the traditional plain white Viltrumite uniform along with a pair of glasses. Vidor joined Lucan and Thula in interrogating Alan the alien for information on the whereabouts of a Viltrumite warrior and his offspring on Earth. Instead, Alan refused, resulting in Alan's beating to a near-death state. He, along with Lucan and Thula, later learned of Nolan's whereabouts, traveled to Thraxa, and started decimating the planet. Vidor is portrayed as a sadistic Viltrumite, similar to Nolan. He talks very lowly of the Thraxans, saying that they die quick once you touch them, almost like comparing them to little things like sand. He did have a little bit of pride when meeting Nolan and applauding his actions towards Mark and Lucan upon seeing blood on his arm. Upon fighting Nolan one-on-one, -on -one, it is shown that he is more of a talker rather than much of a fighter. Like most of his kind, Lucan is a sadistic Viltrumite warrior who takes great pride in his lineage and shows contempt for weak races such as Thraxans or Unopans. Being the sadistic warrior that he is, he enjoys slowly torturing his victims to death as he attempted to do with Mark during their first encounter. But despite being a Viltrumite who survived the Great Purge, he is still weak and low-ranked compared to the other remaining Viltrumites. Lucan was one of three Viltrumite warriors to attack Thraxa, trying to kill Omni-Man and potentially recruit Invincible. He attacked Mark in a cave system to find that Omni-Man had another son with a Thraxan named Andressa. He was beating up Mark and getting the better of him before Omni-Man came in to kick his ass. Omni-Man seemingly killed him and ripped out his intestines. However, Lucan was still alive. Holding his own intestines, he flew in and broke Omni-Man's back, mocking the latter on the importance of making sure your enemy is dead. And to be honest, this was an impressive feat and is the only reason I'm keeping him above Vidor. Thula is cold, bitter, and ruthless, like all other Viltrumites. Despite her advanced age, Thula retains a relatively youthful appearance and physical structure thanks to her Viltrumite genetics. She possesses a muscular build and long braided hair with a knife attached at the end and is dressed in a traditional plain white Viltrumite uniform. As a Viltrumite, Thula's genetics are so potent she can reproduce with almost any other race, and her genetics will almost completely overshadow the inherited genetics of the male. 
She is one of the oldest Viltrumites in Invincible, and it's possible that she might be much older than Omni-Man. But not much is known about Thula's past, other than the fact that she was born on the planet Viltrum and engaged in a bloody survival of the fittest called the Great Purge, along with the rest of her race, and was one of many to survive the war. Unlike most of the Viltrumites, Thula's hair possesses a spear that she uses like a sword or a boomerang. It can be used for long or short range attacks to wound or kill an opponent, making her a very skilled adversary. Omnipotus arrived on Earth to drain the energy to restore the powers he had previously lost. Not much is known about Omnipotus's origin or how his powers came to be. However, his dimension was drained of energy during his time there, making him stronger than ever. Omnipotus possesses many superhuman abilities, only some of which have been seen. He has powerful reality warping powers, which include the ability to reshape matter and energy, bend time and space, and alter, twist, or possibly even rewrite the laws of physics. Omnipotus appears capable of changing the face of the world by pure force of will. He possesses cosmic and psionic power beyond human measurement. His claim to have laid waste to an entire star system suggests his power can initiate a chain reaction of exponentially increasing destruction. He appears to channel the cosmic energy of the matter he destroys and converts that energy into a usable source of power, which he is then able to channel through his own body, enabling him to utilize his reality-altering abilities. During his encounter on Earth, he indicated to the heroes gathered to oppose him that he was in the process of restoring his powers to a previously even greater level, the limits of which are unknown. As his self-proclaimed title, Shaper of Worlds, indicates, Omnipotus is capable of rearranging and transmuting matter into any form he chooses. He can mentally manipulate the molecules of ordinary matter into other shapes with different properties and imbue his creations with artificial life essence, creating non-living automatons capable of performing complex actions and granting them the ability to move under their own accord. Adam Eve has the power to restructure matter with a thought. As long as she knows how something is made up, she can change it into something else. Since she has a great understanding of chemistry and the molecular structure of things as well as an innate knowledge of every law of science, her abilities are only limited by her imagination. She can change living and non-living matter, make atoms obey her will, create new atoms and form complex forms of life out of non-living matter, fly, create force fields, and shape energy to make any object she can visualize. She can augment normally unhealthy foods such as cakes and other sweets into nutritious foods, as well as rearrange the environment. Eve's powers cause her to regenerate from fatal injuries due to the trauma helping her temporarily overcome the mental blocks that prevent her from affecting organic matter. Also, whenever Eve dies of old age, she immediately resurrects and de-ages to her prime. I don't know about you guys, but I would like to see her character turn evil and do all sorts of evil things just so that I can see what kind of weird shit she's capable of doing with her transmutation powers. One major downside of her ability is that any unused atoms are absorbed into her body, which are then removed as waste. She has claimed that on days when she uses her powers a lot, she can go to the bathroom six or seven times. Thetis was born on Viltrum. Seeing that the Viltrumites' planet conquering was tyrannical and evil, Thetis chose to betray his race and became the first of his race to rebel against the Empire. He would slay the Emperor Argol of the Viltrum Empire and defect to parts unknown, sending the Empire into disarray. He later established the coalition of planets to defend the universe against the Viltrumite threat and battled them for thousands of years. Thetis then decided he would use his own DNA as a catalyst for a virus that would be capable of killing Viltrumites. And this virus successfully caused the mass genocide of the Viltrumites. He is probably the oldest Viltrumite in the Invincible Universe and he is also a very skilled warrior. He fought and survived thousands of battles in his youth before betraying the Viltrum Empire. Anissa is one of the very few female Viltrumites, and she is even more terrifying than many of the male Viltrumites. In her life, she participated in multiple wars and also took control of many planets for the Viltrum Empire. She is strong enough to fight against Omni-Man, Thytus, and she has managed to overpower Mark Grayson multiple times. Anissa is also arguably the most controversial character in the Invincible comics, as she is the one behind the series' infamous rape scene. Part of the mission of the Viltrum Empire is to breed with other genetically similar species and have half-Viltrumite children, allowing the ranks of the Viltrum Empire to grow. However, Anissa doesn't want to mate with humans. Instead, she tells Mark that she wants to have a child with him, as he is half-Viltrumite, half-human. Mark refuses, but Anissa doesn't care, with her proceeding to beat him and rape him. 
Craig was born on Viltrum and is thousands of years old. He also fell victim to the Scourge virus and lost his eye. Being a high-ranking general in the Viltrum Empire, he can very well be considered an incredibly skilled strategist and tactician, which aided him in conquering countless worlds for his homeworld and his people. Craig is a black-haired male with a traditional Viltrumite yet pencil mustache who wears the traditional plain white Viltrumite uniform and has one natural left blue eye along with a cybernetic right red eye. Craig is a very practical and logical man. Unlike the more bloodthirsty Viltrumites like Conquest, Craig is more of a soldier than a warrior. He also showed a level of understanding, being reasonable, if not compassionate, by trying to convince Mark that it was for the best if he conquered his world for the Viltrumites and that doing so would spare his people from unneeded suffering and pain. He also acknowledged that having been born on Earth and raised as a human, Mark would find the task set before him to be unpleasant and emotionally taxing, while never admonishing or remarking negatively on Mark or his heritage. Robot is first thought to be nothing more than a robot with advanced artificial intelligence who leads the teen team. As it turns out, Robot is really just a machine controlled by the mind of genius Rudy Connors. Rudy was born with a genetic defect. It was so severe that it required him to live his entire life inside a life support tube full of purified saline and nutrient fluids. His stunted, deformed body would burn if it was exposed to the toxins in the open air. His frail lungs would fail within minutes without assistance. His life support system was so expensive that his birth parents gave Rudy up and he became a ward of the state. Rudy was moved to a government medical facility where he became somewhat of a medical curiosity. The doctors quickly recognized his uncanny intelligence and provided him with computer and communication technology in order to gauge it and the results were amazing. His ability to absorb and process information was off the map and was increasing exponentially as he aged. Rudy now exists outside his tube as a clone of Rex Splode and still controls Robot with his mind. Since Rex Splode's powers are from specially designed surgical implants, Rudy does not possess those powers. Robot's robotic bodies are mechanically constructed humanoid automatons. Their actions and behaviors are remotely operated and controlled by Rudy himself via psychic cybernetic impulses from an implanted interface in his brain. He is easily one of the smartest characters in Invincible Universe. Nolan Grayson was an alien Viltrumite born on their planet Viltrum. His father, Emperor Argal, was the Viltrumite's leader. When he was very young, his father was killed by a turncoat who no longer believed in the Viltrumite's violent ways. Nolan was too young to remember anything about his father. His true heritage was hidden from records in order to hide him from Viltrumite enemies. Nolan was shown to be the strongest superhero on Earth, as his natural Viltrumite abilities made him so. Nolan easily killed the original Guardians of the Globe with minimal effort, and he easily defeated his son, Mark, in battle. Nolan has lived for thousands of years and is still in his physical prime. Basically, Nolan has all the various abilities common among his race. At the same time, he ranks among the elite warriors of his race. His powers are considerably more advanced than most others. Many of the Viltrumite warriors look up to him and are trying to serve the Viltrum Empire like he did. His genetics are so potent that he can reproduce with almost any other race, and his genetics will almost completely overshadow the inherent genetics of the mate, making their offspring almost purely Viltrumite. While primarily relying on his natural Viltrumite raw might to defeat opponents, Nolan is a highly trained warrior, possessing multiple millennia of experience which makes him a highly effective and formidable hand-to-hand -hand combatant. His skills proved able to compete against the entire Guardians of the Globe, killing them each one by one. Likewise, against other Viltrumites, he was decisively able to defeat them one after the other. Conquest was born on Viltrum and was one of the few Viltrumites who survived the Great Purge and the Scourge virus. After the infection left his system, Conquest found himself vulnerable and his strength greatly diminished. After arriving on a planet inhabited by the Ragnars, his right arm was ripped off, his face was permanently scarred, and he was blinded in his right eye. Conquest has proven to be a very strong Viltrumite, despite his old age. If he had not prolonged his battle with Mark, he could have likely beaten him. Conquest was easily able to break out of a 400-ton prison and was unaffected by the explosion triggered by it, which in turn destroyed the entire facility he was kept in. He managed to survive after being headbutted to the point where his face and skull were extremely disfigured. Conquest has shown signs of advanced age, meaning that Conquest has likely lived longer than Nolan Grayson, who has lived for thousands of years. The alternate Mark Graysons are alternate versions of Invincible. Few of them have altruistic motives and are good, 
Most of them just happen to be dangerous, ruthless, and evil. With a few of those, their fathers always raised them to take over, whether they were raised on Earth or not. With the other evil ones, there was something else that turned them evil. For a lot of those, it was Adam Eve being hurt or killed that made them snap. In terms of their, their superpowers, they are all exactly similar to the original Invincible. If they fight one-on-one, -on -one, almost all of them are at the same level, because all of them are basically the same person. So instead of identifying and putting them in separate places, I think they all should be kept in the same spot. Invincible is a brave, competitive, nice, and noble hero, and is true to his own values, especially when he discovers the harsh realities of being a superhero. While Mark is technically a Viltrumite human half-breed, the potency of his Viltrumite genes greatly overshadow his human genes, making him almost a pure-blooded Viltrumite. While spending almost his entire childhood unpowered, he soon manifested all inherited Viltrumite powers. His genetics are so potent that he can reproduce with almost any other race, and his genetics will almost completely overshadow the inherited genetics of the mate. On top of that, he is not just an ordinary Viltrumite, because his grandfather was the ruler of the Viltrumites, and that means he comes from the royal bloodline of Viltrumites. This royal bloodline might be the reason that Mark was able to survive the effects of coming in direct contact with the Scourge virus. He fought some of the strongest Viltrumites and some other characters in Invincible and was able to survive all those encounters, despite getting his organs ripped out of his body. On top of that, he's a young Viltrumite and he continues to grow strong after every fight, which means he has a lot of potential. At one point in the story, Omni-Man himself realizes that Invincible has surpassed him in just a few years. And if he continues to fight and grow strong, he can surpass even the Grand Regent Thrag. Alan is the product of a genetic experiment that would create a super Unopan capable of fighting the Viltrumites. Of all the attempts, Alan was the only fetus that survived the experiment with his mind and body intact. In addition to his super strength and speed, amazing healing abilities, high resistance to injury, the ability to travel in space unaided, light speed reflexes, telepathy, and fighting abilities, Alan has discovered that he has another power. After being beaten past the limits of his body by three fully trained Viltrumite warriors, Alan didn't die. Instead, he healed and came back stronger than ever. He says that for some reason, whatever doesn't kill him makes him stronger, and since he already survived something that should have killed him, maybe nothing can. He also speculates that since he may be unkillable, he might be immortal. After coming back from his beatdown by the Viltrumite trio, Alan is noticeably bigger and more muscular, but otherwise looks the same. It is speculated that Alan may be one of the most powerful beings in the Invincible Universe. Through some unrevealed method, Battle Beast has been imbued with the gifts of superhuman strength, invulnerability, and immortality. The exact limits of his gifts are unknown, but it is clear that they are on par with those of an adult, well-trained Viltrumite warrior. Likewise, his resistance to harm and endurance have been augmented to superhuman levels, rendering him nearly impervious to physical harm and literally tireless. In addition to his raw physical might, Battle Beast possesses the keen senses that are typical to his species. His visual and auditory systems are approximately four, five times more effective than the average human being, while his olfactory senses are even more so. Over the millennia of his existence, Battle Beast has become one of the most proficient combatants in existence. He has attained a virtually unparalleled level of skill in armed and unarmed combat. He has mastered virtually every known fighting system that he has encountered on his travels through the galaxies. He is the only being in the universe who was able to take on the Grand Regent Thrag at his full power, was able to fight him for days, and was able to put Thrag in a life or death situation. Thrag was said to be the strongest Viltrumite to ever exist, which he is stronger than Omni-Man and Invincible. He was able to easily decapitate Thetis, kill Battle Beast, and fatally wound Omni-Man and Invincible. Originally, Thrag was born on Viltrum as the son of one of the closest advisors of Emperor Argal. He was trained in all manners of combat and bred to be the strongest Viltrumite. After Argal was killed by Thetis, Thrag fought in the Viltrumite Civil War to restore order to the Empire. After the battle, the Viltrumites would emerge as an unbeatable race led by him. Thrag would be granted the title of Grand Regent, and he would keep Argal's skull as a reminder of what would happen if the Empire fell into disarray. When Omni-Man and Invincible fought him together, they were unable to match his strength, let alone defeat him. In simple words, Thrag can be considered the Hulk of all Viltrumites. 